Okay, we're back. I guess this would be my third video on the Predator, uh, the Predator Tri-Laser system. Okay. So. Uh, here, I'm gonna turn these off for right now. Okay, so anyways, uh, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, so uh, these are going to be the steps, the uh, the 26 steps, this is the beginning of the 26 steps of how to do this. Okay, so, uh, first one is, is uh, point three, step point three is maybe wear some eye protection. I'm not going to wear eye protection because I'm lazy. Uh, maybe use rubber gloves when, uh, well, what is it? Using the hot glue, the hot glue. So while you're using the hot glue, you may want to use rubber gloves, but I, I know hot glue well enough to usually keep from burning myself. Okay, step one, cut wire for switch, strip ends, and tin the ends. And I'm going to take my camera and I'm going to put it down here and then I'm going to do my stuff right here for the rest of the video. When I turn the page, I'll show you the next page, you know, but uh, I want to keep the camera here for pretty much the rest of the video so I can work on stuff right here and you guys can see what I'm doing okay so hold on okay <clears throat> step one step one cut wire for switch strip ends and and uh, tin the ends so you know what first thing I need to do is I need to show you what tinning is so um, I'll strip off a piece on the end here. Uh, do I need these to be very long? Well, it's going to connect up to that other thing. So yeah, I'll make it long so you guys can, you guys can see. Okay, tinning. Okay, there's the end of the wire. Now to tin the wire, oh, I gotta turn on the thing. Okay, I'll be back in a couple minutes. Okay. This is what, <clears throat> this is what um, tinning, tinning is. T-I-N-N-I-N-G. Now you see, I've got a blob of solder already on my soldering iron here, and I'm feeding that blob. Okay, now I want to take that blob. I'm going to touch it to the to the uh, wire, the exposed wire, and that blob actually makes contact with the exposed wire and heats it up. And then you take your. Uh, I wonder if I can zoom in any further. No, that's as far as I can zoom in. Then you take your. Uh, regular uh, solder and you touch it to the wire and if the wire is hot enough then it will uh, if the wire is hot enough then the uh, the uh, which we call the solder will melt onto it yeah you can kind of see the solder is kind of melting on there and when the solder melts on there this this is called rosin core solder. Rosin core solder. And rosin core solder has uh, rosin on the inside of the solder. And uh, the, so the rosin on the inside of the solder, what that does is it makes the solder turn into a nice blob and uh, flow easily. Think of it kind of like a, kind of like a liquid yeah it is it is a liquid it's a hot liquid and uh so anyways when you tin something this is what you're doing and okay what if you what if what if your 
solder that's on there starts to get hard and blobbish. Come on. Uh, I'm trying to get it to uh, get uh, hard. I know, that sounds funny. Uh, because if you play with the solder for long enough, yeah, there you go. It doesn't, it doesn't move around as easily as it used to move. You see that little spike that's forming on there when you take away the soldering iron? Okay, so the blob of solder is starting to uh, run out of, uh, uh, of rosin. And so to be able to fix this problem with the solder because it's blobbing up and when you try to join two wires together and your solder is blobbing up it's kind of annoying when your solder blobs up like this and put your soldering iron on there and put some more solder on there and the rosin that's in the solder will make it nice and liquidy and see how it just came off and it's nice and smooth okay oh yeah and when you're when you're soldering the first thing you do is you put your you know, like I said earlier, you put first thing you do is you put your soldering iron with uh, the uh, with a blob of solder on there and let it heat up first uh, for a little while before you for just a I don't know maybe ten seconds or something five seconds before you start putting your your uh, solder your solder on there. I'm so sorry that this is out of uh, focus. Maybe if I uh, maybe if I put a piece of paper behind it, maybe that'll bring it into focus. Hold on. Okay, and uh, there. Okay, so I showed you how to tin. I showed you solder management. If the solder starts to get blobby, you put a you put the iron back onto it to heat it up, and then you put a little bit more solder on there because the solder has the uh, the rosin stuff inside of it. It has the rosin stuff inside of it, and so it'll make the it'll make the um, uh, what you call it the uh, solder start to flow like a liquid again. So it'll be all nice and smooth. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Here. Uh, I'm gonna bring this back for right now, so that we can see this other thing I've got over here. Okay. I'm gonna take this wire this is this is just the wire for the for the uh, cap for the battery but uh, what I'm doing with it right now is I'm going to tin it also right because I'm teaching you guys how to tin and uh, I'm making this tutorial for basically for people that know almost nothing about soldering people that don't have any electronics uh, components or electronics tools like a soldering iron and you know wire cutters and solder and a, so and a soldering iron and uh and stuff like that okay uh actually it's time for me to show you that other uh that other soldering um uh ninja uh mastery form that um <clears throat> that may make it so that you don't need the helping hands and okay there you go you can see it right there the helping hands uh, remember this thing right here this is the helping hands okay so what you do is you lay down your soldering iron and you put something on the back of it so that the tip is sticking out here. And you can see the tip is sticking out here. I'm sorry the camera can't focus on it very well. I wish my camera could focus on it. But this is the tip right here. And uh, you can kind of see it. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of solder on it. There we go. So we got a little bit of a solder blob on there. And now we have our two wires. And we're going to take our two wires and kind of touch them together and then touch them to the soldering iron and then pull them away from the soldering iron there we go 
and uh, there you go they're 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 soldered together actually normally what we would do is <clears throat> Uh, unsolder this normally what we would do is we would take our wire and we would put our um, our shrink tubing onto the wire first and you know then move your shrink tubing all the way back to the all the way back away and then you take your two wires and you put them on and then you lift them away and then they're soldered and you may have like You see that little bump on there? See that little bump on it? Maybe if I put it back here, will it focus? Oh, it kind of focuses. Okay, well, you see that little bump on there? This is a perfect uh, time for us to use our wire our wire clippers. As uh, we'll just, yeah, you see the little bump? Just take that little bastard and cut it off, but try not to cut into your wires. Okay, there you go. The little bump is gone. And then now what we would do is we would take our um, uh, uh, our um, uh, what's this called? Uh, the, the shrink tubing. Take your shrink tubing, put your shrink tubing over it, and then we would shrink the shrink tubing. Okay, so that was the little lesson about how to uh, how to do soldering without uh, using a helping hands. But I like my helping hands because this feels kind of dangerous to me, leaving my soldering iron just laying here. I mean, what if my cat walks up and smells it or something, you know? So uh, I don't like leaving my soldering iron out. But if you solder it like that, then you may not need. Uh, then you may not need your helping hands thing to hold everything for you because you're holding with two hands and the soldering iron is just sitting there and uh to put solder on you you put solder on you put solder iron on your iron that's sitting there so there's a solder blob on it and then you'd like touch your two things together and because those two wires are tinned at the tips um because those two wires are tinned at the tips and you touch them to the to the soldering iron with the solder a blob of solder on there then uh the solder will flow onto them easy and they'll they'll solder together easier okay rather than like uh like if we uh, thing. Yeah, stop that don't do that there we go <clears throat> yes okay I'm gonna uh, yeah I'm gonna uh, whatever I'll just like do that okay and uh, so now we have an exposed wire and if we had another newly exposed wire that didn't have any solder on it and we put them together and then we try to put solder on them uh, without them being tipped uh, tinned without them being tinned sometimes it'll be a little bit harder to get them to go together and it'll be a little bit harder to get the solder to flow on there nicely but if it's blobbing up on there uh, like I said you know add some more uh, add some more uh, so solder to it that'll make it uh, smoother okay so but anyways I'm gonna use my I'm gonna use my helping hands machine actually this is about the end of this video and geez we didn't even get to we didn't even get to uh, step number one yet I'm sorry it's taking so long it's going to take a lot of uh, it's going to take several videos to be able to make all of this and the reason why is because there's 26 steps and uh, I'm basically doing this in a format that uh, I can uh, I can uh, I'm basically teaching electronics in some way I'm teaching you how to make these and uh, you can make them and sell them if you want if you do tell me about it I think that'd be awesome I'd love to see that uh, anyways so I'm going to make another video and uh, see you guys in a little bit